A very good morning, dear friends and fellow alumnus to AABN's 160th weekly webinar series. Thanks to the internet, online connectivity, and the Diamond Dozen apps, our forum has not missed out on meeting interesting people and imbibing positive, positives from, the work and, from their work and life. Over the past three plus years, we have been able to put together online programs to keep our AABN community not just engaged, but also meet a range of inspiring people who can help shape your ideas and thoughts. Today, we have one such personality, Mr. D. Manivanan, a respected educationist, social visionary, eminent sportsperson, and a philanthropist. What makes him an apt choice for this audience is that he too is an alumnus of Anamal University and he belongs to the 19, uh, 1981 batch of chemical engineering. I have the pleasant duty of welcoming and introducing him today at Blending Emotional Intelligence and NLP for Excellence in Life, an interactive business networking session. We are aware that many books have been written that seek to combine theory and practical advice around how emotional intelligence can be applied in practice. Emotional intelligence, as you know, is, a, is about how you turn up in the world through emotional adaptability. Linking emotional intelligence and the ideas and practices of NLP can provide an integrated NLP program or a personal approach to an enhanced lifestyle. NLP is highly practical and action oriented. What does that mean in practice? Let's hear from our distinguished speaker, his perspectives on the same. A very warm welcome to you, Mr. D. Manivanan, and we feel profoundly honored that you have taken time off on a Sunday to address us. Now, if I were to provide you with a comprehensive profile of Mr. D. Manivanan, I might require more than the time we have fixed for the whole program. So I will limit myself to a few that will capture the essence of his achievements and activities. Mr. D. Manivanan is the founder and CEO of Sepcon Ventures and former secretary of IATA. He is an industrial advisor consultant for large industries and MSME and is familiar with the government and regulatory affairs, project advisory services, single window portal compliances, government incentives are his familiar areas. He has a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from Anamal University and belongs to the 1981 batch and also has a master's in business administration from Madras University. His core competencies include his stint as senior, uh, former senior TITCO project management official, presently advisor, consultant to MNCs, 40 plus years of experience in government and private sectors in top management levels. Qualified in chemical engineering and business administration, solution provider in obtaining regulatory approvals, licenses, government incentives and clearances. Expertise in management of MSMEs and startups. He is currently the advisor, 9.9 .9 Insights Private Limited, Noida UP, Albright Stonebridge Group, USA. Regulatory affairs, single window clearances and incentives for a rupee 800 crore MNC project in Tamil Nadu. In the past, he has been associated with Beramal Knowledge Park for administration and development of 110 acres with six schools and an engineering college. Was the head of infrastructure and development at Chetinad Health City, involved in the administration and development of 100 acre campus. As general manager of projects in Titco, was involved in conceptualization, foreign collaboration, implementation, and supervision of large industrial projects in Tamil Nadu. He is a qualified life skill uh, facilitator training from Arise Foundation US. He is a qualified career guidance trainer from Pearson Academy of India and a master pra practitioner in NLP from, NL from NF L NLP USA. He has been an avid lover of sports and fit uh, fitness even today and has been participating in several tennis tournaments across the country and is also a national senior level tennis player, a long distance cyclist and a marathoner. On the social side and organization involvement, he is an active Freemason, past master, and winner of All India Seven Star Award. Besides this, as part of giving back to the alma mater, he is actively involved and is the coordinator of the state program for the Department of Chemical Engineering and Anomaly University. Also, was nominated as a distinguished alumni for the year 2023. I have a compulsion for completion and an innate incitable for closure because, because we are uncomfortable with uncertainty. I present this challenge to you to help us come out of the session not merely knowing more and feeling better but to the concrete agenda for action. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to cut short this title track and present and welcome Mr. D. Manivanan. Over to you, Mr. Manivanan. Thank you, Mr. Gopi. Uh, very flattering <laughs> to get such a detailed uh, introduction about me. But anyway, I'm very thankful to you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to you. I'm very happy to connect with you all through this program. My profound thanks to Gopi and his team members of AABN for relentlessly 
um, working on this Sunday even, uh, morning meetings for the last about three years, 160 meetings. It's not a uh, simple task. So I congratulate him, compliment him, and wish uh, Gopi and his team all the best for the future. Uh, so friends, just to start with an excitement, uh, today, this day, uh, 148 years back, um, uh, uh, Graham Bell first tested his telephone. This is just a note of excitement to be brought in into this program. Nothing to do with NLP or emotional intelligence. Um, so uh, today we are having, let me start my presentation. So is this visible, Gopi? Not yet, sir. Not yet? No, not yet. Okay. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. It's okay now. It's okay now. Okay. So, friends, thank you all. Uh, visually, giving my thanks to you. So, like we know, today's uh, session is a very unique uh, title, which I have selected because uh, we all know about EI, we all know about NLP, but how uh, and what happens when we combine these two? to reach the pinnacle of performance is what uh, we are going to discuss today. I should uh, submit a disclaimer that I'm not a master in this subject. It's out of passion that I have uh, educated myself on these two uh, interesting topics because uh, value addition to life is something which I always been uh, venturing from an early age of life. So I self-educated and got the help of some institutions to learn about this and whatever knowledge, uh, limited knowledge I have, I keep sharing with whomever I could connect with. So that is how I uh, try to make use of uh, what little I know in this. So uh, at the end of the session, I feel it would be better if we all share our individual experiences and give more value up to the one hour that we are spending today. So this uh, session, we will uh, I'll just touch upon the different topics that we are going to see. Uh, first of all, what is excellence? What we mean by excellence in life. Then uh, there's something about the neurology, the, the neuroscience, how the brain works. And uh, the fundamentals of the EI, just touch upon and brush our memories. And talk about some simple techniques uh, of two important um, emotions that we every day face, but sometimes not able to um, succeed in uh, managing them, stress and anger. Then the fundamentals of uh, NLP. Uh, then two very important um, uh, um, thoughts about uh, or discussions about subconscious mind, uh, which controls most of our, what we do in a day-to-day -day life. And then two techniques of NLP. We will we'll do a demo. Um, so and finally, how NLP helps to improve AI. So this is the blending part. How NLP helps to improve our EI and how they complement each other. So, first of all, what do we mean by excellence? So, we all have different uh, uh, perceptions about excellence. For some, it will be monetary benefits. So for some, it will be name. Uh, for some, it will be uh, positions and uh, amassing wealth and properties. So, uh, long back, uh, about 1943, uh, Abraham Maslow, a very eminent uh, uh, management person, he came out with this uh, very commonly known uh, pyramid, which we call the hierarchy of human needs. So like you see here, we all know about this. Uh, most of you would have known about this. The topmost uh, part of the pyramid is self-actualization. So now we are talking about excellence. And we now know that self-actualization is the feature and the ability which will take us to that position of excellence. That is the pinnacle of performance, they call. So there are some other things like transcendence and other things, but these five um, parts of the pyramid are very, very important. Now, most of us would like to know now what is self-actualization. Well, let us see what are the characteristics of a self-actualized person. Most of us, most of you will be having many of these characteristics and traits. 
but this is a combination of 12 very important self-actualized person. You may also relate this to some people who now you will know, oh yeah, this person I know, uh, they, they, this person, he or she is having these traits. So he's a self-actualized person. So our endeavor is to now become a more self-actualized person by knowing these traits. If we already do not possess some of these traits, we will take the effort to get those traits and improve upon them. So we will become more and more self-actualized. So that will lead us to excellence. So that is the purpose of this. So peaking in performances. So we all sometimes peak in our performance, but we don't come repeat in peaking. We will come down, sometimes we peak, we'll come down like that. So peaking in performances is a very important sign of a self-actualized person. A sense of appreciation for himself and for others around him. So that quality is another trait. Acceptance of what things are as such, not over uh, expecting, accepting as such what is available. And then being realistic, not exaggerating or over enthusiastic, but being realistic in what to do and achieving that. The self-actualized person will be interested to face problems will be interested to face problems and find solutions. So he will have that sort of a characteristics. Many people are will be afraid of problems, but this person will be interested. They will uh, always go reach out to others and solve their problems and uh, their own problems. The person uh, who self-actualized will be very independent and will try to do many things independently. Instead of joining, he will be very confident to do things independently. He will be um, liking to be in solitude, like privacy a lot. And then a sense of humor in a philosophical way will be there. And then the spontaneity, the instant uh, ability to make some thoughts and decisions is a very important feature of a self-actualized uh, person. Sense of purpose will be there. Whatever the person does, he, they will look for a purpose, not only for some uh, benefit for himself or herself, like getting a reward or uh, uh, some monetary benefits, but a purpose which will benefit him, uh, others. Then this person will not think of the destination, but will focus more on the journey. So uh, like they say, uh, to work, you have the right, but not to the result. So the person will focus more on the journey and prepare very well. So that's very, very important. And finally, the self-actualized person will be very creative. Creative doesn't mean artwork or something, but in, in thinking differently to do anything. So coming now to something very important, uh, IBM, as you know, is a company which is worldwide uh, spending a lot of time, effort and money in skill development. So right now about 20 million jobs throughout the world the, IBM is trying to reskill, upskill. They have come out with a set of skills that are very, very important and required in this digital age, right now and in the future. Let's see what they are. Emotional intelligence stops the list. Creativity, innovation. Creativity is the thought process. Innovation is the final product, the outcome. Flexibility and adaptability to suit different changes happening. We are living in a very dynamic world. So this person uh, in the digital age should be very flexible to upskill or reskill himself and to fit in any position that the company wants or where he wants to go himself. He must be very adaptable. Of course, uh, AI and automation are happening very rapidly and a person should be abreast of what is happening in this area. Now, theory is getting converted into software. All chemical engineering um, processes are becoming software driven, apps driven. So a person cannot be without, uh, um, be away from knowing what software are related to the subject knowledge. So friends, these important five qualities we must also possess. Let us uh, go a little deeper into emotional intelligence. But before that, you know, about 50 years back, people were talking about IQ as the criteria for uh, rating the capability of a person. 
and then came other things like emotional quotient and later uh, came also spiritual quotient so because uh, spiritual mindset is good for some other thinking processes and now for the last 10 years or so people are talking about adversity quotient aq so adversity quotient uh, judges the capability of a person to manage risks or failures or challenges so how he will uh, be able to overcome challenges and failures failure management so these are the emerging trends in the assessment of a uh, the intelligence of a person now let us come to uh, the meaning of emotional intelligence now emotional intelligence as you know has two words emotional and intelligence now we'll talk about let us talk about emotions now friends we all know emotions means feelings and which starts first as a thought then becomes a feeling then an emotion and slowly goes to different different things and finally determines our personality itself so starting from a thought process the whole chain is very important to understand now emotions as you know are positive negative the power of emotions is something which is uh, very very um, important for us to understand in my opinion negative emotions are equal or even more powerful than positive emotions that's the reason i feel lord nataraja under his foot has a small demon which is the negative emotions he himself with so many different multi Uh, multiple uh, capabilities recognizes that there is a demon and he has to keep it under his foot otherwise the demon will become more powerful so negative uh, emotions have to be respected just like when we play some game we respect the enemy not really that they we appreciate but we have to know that if we don't perform properly they will beat us so what is the power of an emotion if i say an emotion can create matter will you agree with me or not i will tell you with a proof when we suddenly get a news that a person very close to us a pet or somebody very very close to us has passed away immediately we will get the tear tears in our eyes the tear is a liquid which is a matter like solid liquid and gas so just that one thought has created matter so that is the power of an emotion now negative emotions are being used in different ways like we see in video games angry bird is one of the best selling um, softwares and games the company which is owned uh, angry birds has made billions of dollars why not they name it why didn't they name it as happy bird definitely it won't sell people somehow get an addiction towards negative emotions that is the reason why media like newspaper and video youtube they all flash news about negativities they take the newspaper lot of negative news that goes deeper into our long term memory and possesses possesses our, uh, our thought process like the black thing that sticks on to the spider man 3 very difficult to remove so we have to know that negative emotions are strong and we have to manage them and control them if we don't manage the negative emotions properly the lot of psychological and also physiological issues so psychopathological issues are also there both psychology and pathology uh, together affect us because of these diseases if we don't understand our own emotions that is called a, a problem called alexithymia so if somebody doesn't know what emotions we ha- i have then i have a uh, disorder so we must know that also uh, generally we call some people uh, he is an emotional guy so in th- in english in a very slang way we can say tension party we say that person immediately shouts he gets angry he gets nervous he cries but uh, emotion many people feel it is from the heart and uh, the thought process is from head so when we take decisions 
whether you should take it from the heart or from the head, you have to decide, they say. But actually, an emotion doesn't come from the heart. It starts from the head. It starts from a thought process. So where is the thought process? In the brain. So that relate, transforms into an emotion. So now coming to a little bit about understanding the brain. So the neural science. See, friends, um, the brain has about 400 billion neurons, more than the number of sand particles in the seas or the stars in the sky. Whenever there is a thought process or whenever we learn a skill, in between neurons, the signals pass through a gap called the synapse. And then this creates an electrochemical reaction with, with a charge. And this path is called the neural pathway. So when I learn a new skill, initially the signal will take time to pass from one to the other. But with repeated practice, the neural pathway will be very easy. It is, you can compare it with a person walking in a field, uh, in, a, in a forest or in a, in a village for the first time. Initially, to go from this place to that place, he will have take long time to cross some rocks, some thorny bushes like that. But the second time, he will know how to go. The third time, the thousandth time he goes, the, already the pathway would have been formed. The same way in the neural, uh, in the brain, the neural pathways are formed. That is why they say to perfect a stroke in cricket or tennis, you do uh, the muscle memory, thousand times the muscle memory will be formed. Now, the eye represents all the sensory uh, stimuli that we get. And the signal goes to the thalamus first and then to the occipital lobe, which is the analytical brain, and then comes back to the amygdala where the emotions, the chemicals are formed. Now, what we know is there is something called the amygdala hijack. See, friends, um, the signals uh, in, in the neurons, these chemicals are formed. And then they, when they pass, if the signal goes from the thalamus to the occipital lobe, then there will be some analysis done. There will be some examination of the thoughts and then it will come back to the amygdala to form the emotions. If this process happens, then there will be time and the emotions will be better off. But what is happening is sometimes the signal by bypass and they get hijacked to the amygdala straight and so immediately the emotions get triggered. This is why sometimes we get into problems. We get negative emotions quickly. But if we allow time and give time for the signals to go to the occipital lobe for the analysis to be done, then we will know the pros and cons of the emotions to be formed and then we can take better decisions. So we uh, know, uh, or some of you must have known about the happiness chemicals, those DOAC. Um, re represents um, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin and endorphin which are together these four are called happiness chemicals. Now there are um, uh, now some clubs in uh, some foreign countries which are called laughter clubs. We, clubs are here also but these are called laughter parties where people go, they pay some money and inside the room nitrous oxide is induced and they laugh and they feel happy so they will get more of these happiness chemicals. See how the world is uh, changing. We were all laughing so much in our lives. Naturally, these dose chemical, happiness chemicals were secre secreting. So this um, study of laughter is called gelatology. And it has become so important that UN has included gelatology as one of the life skills. Like uh, communication skills and self-esteem and so many things. Gelatology has been included as a life skill. So in the world... Because of so many different reasons, people are now not laughing so much. And to induce them to laugh, now a lot of changes are happening. So, um, let us. <clears throat> Another point to remember in this is that in the brain, already there are neural pathways and some past memories. And so, these also influence the formation of new thoughts and new emotions. So what we should do is whatever bad memories are there, we must erase or bring more good memories to suppress the bad.
bad memories. So then our uh, emotions will be better. So the more of the uh, wanted, I mean, better required uh, or uh, desired chemicals like uh, this dose chemicals will be secreted. Now I will give you a small uh, demo now. See, in um, psychology, there is um, a technique which people use to understand others uh, or to make them become better in their emotional uh, mindset. So these are called suggestibility tests. They are uh, of three types. One is the emotional suggestibility, where somebody is told about the emotional part of a command or a suggestion. So if I'm telling you, clean this room to, to make it as good as you would like, that is enough. That emotional suggestibility is enough for that person to clean the room so nicely that he feels very happy. But for some people, that is not enough. That suggestion will not work. So we have to give them the physical test, physical suggestibility test, where I should tell them, you first clean the room, remove the dust, then mop it, then use a vacuum cleaner, and then wipe it, and then arrange them. Like that, physically, we have to give them the directions, suggestions. That only will work. For the other person, there is the intellectual suggestions. That is the intellectual suggestibility test. For them, we'll have to give them the analytical and the um, resulting quantitative uh, um, uh, benefits of an action. Then it will uh, attract them and then they will do. So now I will give you a small uh, suggestibility, physical suggestibility test. I request all of you to please sit properly. And... Uh, Close your eyes, extend your two arms in front of you. It need not be very straight. You can bend your elbow a little bit. It should be relaxed and the fingers should be pointing down in a relaxed way. Take deep, five deep breaths. You are sitting comfortably. Your two hands are on the same level. You are taking suggestions from me. This is a physical suggestion. So whatever suggestion I'm giving, please follow. So now imagine that I am tying a half a kg dumbbell on your left and wrist. The dumbbell is tied by a small rope. And so the dumbbell is pulling your hand down. The dumbbell is heavy and it is pulling your left arm down and down and down. On the right hand wrist, I am tying 10 helium balloons and they are capable of lifting a half a kg dumbbell up. To that extent, they have the capacity. So this bunch of helium balloons are lifting your right hands up and up and up. The dumbbell on your left hand is pulling the left hand down and down and down. The right hand is lifting the helium balloons in the right hand are lifting your right hand up and up and up. Now open your eyes and see the levels of your two hands. I'm sure there will be a difference. For the people who have a big difference in the two hands. That means you are a person who will accept physical suggestibilities, su su suggestions. Those who have not had any change, that means you are not a person who will take phys physical suggestions. So, friends, this is called uh, something to do with neuroplasticity. So, the, the stimuli that you get through the years which go into thoughts and which will connect with your neuro system will have an effect on your neurological um, results. So this is just an example of how the brain works. Stimulus, thought, then actions. Now let's go to quickly the basic 
concepts of uh, emotional intelligence. Friends, before uh, going into the um, concepts, I will tell you the definition of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the ability to identify, assess, and manage your own emotions and those of others around you. So you have to first be aware of your own emotions. Like I said, if you are not able to have an awareness, uh, that's called alexithymia. So you have to do an awareness exercise. What is the exercise? It is simple. Just like you are giving a blood sample to the lab, you have to just calmly take a paper and pencil and from morning to night in an average day, what types of emotions do you get? You must write to the left. This time to this time. Then you have to identify the intensity of that emotion, whether from a scale of 1 to 10. And then you have to find out who is the cause, what, what is the cause of that emotion. I am very happy, I write 9, I write pets. So I play for 15 minutes with my pets, I am extremely happy, I forget the world. Like that you have to write. Sometimes when you, if you have some tension somewhere, that also you must, some fear, some anxiety, all positive and negative emotions, you must write. And the intensity, the duration and the cause and the effect. This is the self-awareness exercise you have to make. And then you will know for how much time positive emotions are there, to what extent. For how much time negative emotions are there, to what extent. Then that is the self-awareness of your emotions. Now you have understood, you have made a diagnosis of your emotions. This diagnosis, nobody else in the world can do. Only you can do for yourself. Now the second concept of uh, EI is, you have to manage your own emotions. Now you have to increase the positive emotions in terms of intensity and duration. And then you have to decrease the negative emotions in terms of intensity and duration. So this is the second. If you do these, then only you are becoming emotionally intelligent. Now, now going from you, you have to go to the other person. Now, I said in the beginning, you have to manage the emotions of the others also. So for that, you won't know 100% their emotions like you can know about yourself. So you must have empathy and put yourself in their position and always think from their perspective. From, you must just become them and then think and then try to understand what emotions that person would have had, would be having. Like that, you must have that empathy. And then you are slowly becoming emotionally intelligent to the extent of understanding their emotions also. Yeah. Then finally, this once you know your own emotions and their own emotions, then it is a question of coming together between you and the others. The entire society, it could be personal in, in the family, in the society, in the workplace, any, anywhere. So this is called rapport building. So rapport building is something which is very important. Here, communication skills are very important. And in communications, reading, writing, speaking and listening. In listening, there is something called active listening. Active listening means not just listening through the ear, but it should be in the head. It is comprehending. Listening actually means comprehending. So to that extent, you must understand and comprehend and you must do paraphrasing. That means you must repeat what somebody has told you and check that you have understood what they have told. All these are nuances of the communication process, which will develop your art of connecting, bonding and developing rapport with the people in the society. So all this put together, you will become an intelligent person emotionally. So this is called emotional intelligence. So now, usually we say man has six senses. So he is able to reason out. So he is called a rational being. <clears throat> Compared to a human being, we say an animal is an irrational being and it has no sense of reasoning. So it is always wild beast. I beg to differ a little bit on this. Uh, just like that saying, man is rational and animal is irrational. Many times we also have the beast inside us. And if we don't control our emotions, we'll also become even worse than beasts. And on the other hand, animals can be very, very good. 
they will sometimes be hurt better than a person who is emotionally imbalanced. And the animals are also, in a way, rational in that sense. So we cannot just like that term some animal as a irrational being and uh, dispense with that. I'm showing pictures of two wonderful, um, uh, the same uh, German Shepherd dog. This is my pet and uh, she's three years old. And for me, friends, uh, I'm, I'm not joking. She is my emotional intelligence coach. Her name is Maya. She came from Uti. She's three years old. Why do I say this? Don't think that I'm putting the picture of an animal here. Uh, how I, the, the, this dog can be my coach. Maya is very, very intelligent emotionally. Um, one day, some of you can meet her. When we go for some pet get-togethers, she will bond with everybody, all the other pets. Even if some pets are aggressive, she will make them mellow down and then become calm and friendly, so much so that everybody will come and play with her. So, with we have I have another pet, um, uh, an Indian dog, uh, dog. With her, I can see Maya exp I mean, uh, bringing out different uh, emotions. Sometimes she's passive, sometimes she's assertive, sometimes she's aggressive, sometimes she's very friendly, sometimes she's a little bossy. So many things. When I'm sometimes, when I sometimes uh, scold at her, she will come and lick me, cool me down instantaneously. So, friends, what I'm trying to say is we can see emotions, uh, emotional intelligence in many things around us, even with animals and insects and birds and people, definitely. And then bring those good qualities to us so that we become better uh, people. Now, I will tell you two simple techniques, but very interesting techniques to manage our emotions. See this bat. It is upside down and um, it is having a different view of the entire world compared to us. So this is something which is used in NLP and the technique is called reframing. What it says is, if we change the way we look at things, the things that we look at change. So I'll repeat, if we change the way we look at things, the things that we look at change. Many times we uh, have experiences and situations and we give a particular meaning to it depending on our perception. But if we, cha if we change the frame and if we change the way we look at that particular situation or experience, the meaning of that will change. And with that change in the meaning, the change in our behavior will also happen. So this is called reframing. Reframing, the picture is the same, the frame is changed. So the total view is changed. I hope you got the point. So this technique is used um, in different uh, aspects of our life for problem solving, make a decision. And we look at it from different perspective, like we say, and for different creative thinking and uh, in, in different ecosystems. Now I'll come to another very interesting uh, technique, uh, which is basically brought out by a management guru called Stephen Covey. You must have known him. This is called a 90-10 principle. It's a very simple but a very, very uh, important and good tool for us of how we look at our lives and how we can manage our emotions. Uh, see, 10% of what happens to us in our lives are by due to external factors on which we don't have any control. It will happen. You have no say in the matter. It could be people, it could be some uh, traffic jam, it could be something happening, it could be some bad uh, garbage in the street. Uh, or some dog coming and biting you in the streets, different things, or somebody scolding in the office, or somebody shout, anything which is beyond your control. But that is only 10%. But the balance 90% of our life, our time in a day, or our life together, depends on how we react to that 10%. If we react harshly and uh, with the negative emotions on the 10%, that 90% also will be spoiled. So it depends on how we respond or react to that 10%. Let me take a small example. 
there is a traffic jam in the morning we get so irritated or or an auto guy scolds you in a bad language you get so irritated and that has a snowball effect it goes on and on and on the 90% of the day also gets damaged but if we just leave it off and just say that it was not in our control it is the 10% stephen covey's 90 10 principle i have to apply so that um, auto driver or so he is not in our uh, control let it be forgotten then the 90% you can have beautifully spent with a lot of nice things so this is these are two small techniques let me come to uh, the emotion which we all have when i i have interacted uh, with thousands and thousands of school students in career guidance and life skills training so um more than 70% of them when i give them a set of 10 skills like self esteem development uh, communication skills time management so many things they pick two stresses stress management they want one is stress management and the other one is anger anger management now stress is something which is very subjective for from what is stress for me will be nothing for another person but we cannot rule out that day in and day out there are things happening if we don't uh, which if we don't treat properly or be aware of it will become bigger now i'll show you just one graph which you can visually capture in your memory which will help you how to manage stress now imagine dhoni is walking into the ahmedabad stadium with 130000 people shouting and he has to score 20 runs in one last over six balls won't he have stress yes but the way he or anybody can manage their stress uh, can be one of these three types the first one if somebody is totally not at all bothered not at all bothered about that stress at all not even taking anything into consideration even that goal he has to achieve so he doesn't focus he doesn't want to do anything he is just very quiet that is the first stage where the initial stage itself he just lets go uh, of doing in, um, in anything so what happens is there is no interest in the performance there is boredom and there is no performance also so here we see the graph the performance is very low the right extreme is the distress so stress is of three types no stress then distress here you let the pressure come into you so much that you feel very tired you get so much influenced by the things happening that you become tired and you are not able to do anything there also there won't be performance but if you focus on the content of the sub, uh, of the matter and separate the message from the speaker we say for example uh, leave out the speaker and uh, other influences and go into the content alone then he will know how find solutions of how to do the uh, to manage that and how to overcome that and he'll find ways to overcome that problem and then his performance will go up so you see this is called u stress so for given difficult situation three types of approaches are there and in general for any stress if you adopt the u stress management uh, style you will end up with a high performance so dhoni goes takes the pressure i mean the, the the sound and the other things to his advantage he gets pumped up he gets motivated but he keeps the focus he is very concentrated he is very still there is no emotion on his face he just looks at the ball draws all the energy and then gives the best performance and wins so this also we can apply in our lives let me go uh, to the next uh, important um, negative emotion see friends you see two images here uh, these two rooms are in a place called kanya lounge in chennai and this is called a rage room if you pay 500 rupees per hour 
you can go and trash all the things you can you will get a sledgehammer or a, a baseball club or a big uh, hammer uh, and you can take your own things if you want from your home and keep them on a table and trash them and vent out all your anger so see how people are taking advantage of the negative emotions of people for their own monetary benefit i wouldn't um, uh, recommend this uh, this is not addressing the cause of anger uh, or stress so what we should do is uh, first we must identify the triggers like the self awareness uh, exercise we did what are all the triggers that are giving this and always envisage a red light on that person or that situation and that you will get a caution there is a red light first you must know this may transform into the next stage of anger so <clears throat> we must be very careful and we must nip it in the bud in the f or f means flight or fight so there are two strategies to face any situation flight means not run away but not get into the problem be away from the problem fight is go into the problem and then fight in the ring and that means argue in different ways or face the problem so now i'll show you an image which we can you can also memorize uh, you must be knowing about these words being passive or assertive for example if somebody is in the, going in the road you are walking and uh, the person uh, a, a person you know sort of dashes you and then uh, scolds you for that with a bad word what will this trigger this is a triggering point it's his fault he has go use the bad language you are just going so what will you do <clears throat> there are two approaches one is to whether to react or to respond first of all you must know that red light means don't react it is all easy to say even i am not a very perfect uh, follower of all this but i am sharing to you the techniques i am sure we can all change and become better in time so one is to be passive if you are passive at that situation he will take a upper hand and he will scold you more on the other hand uh, so if if you come out of that situation you will feel very bad that you have been passive it was not your fault but you okay. have been the victim and uh, somebody has bullied you so if you are aggressive on the other side and if you are started to fight then it will end up in a fight and a um, uh, lot of bigger complications will happen that also will linger in your mind and you will be affected by that so the best strategy psychologically people say is to be assertive that is to be angry without being aggressive is assertiveness to express your anger without being aggressive so you must just say hey buddy you, what you did was not good i don't appreciate it it was not my mistake it was your mistake and then don't um, make it a bigger issue it was like so in that way if you handle a situation you can communicate in different situations you can tell it orally or you can write a letter you can send a message or a voice message in different ways but you communicate so then what will happen is your subconscious mind will be relieved it won't have the burden of being passive or aggressive so for anger management being assertive expressing anger is permitted but being aggressive is not permitted so these are the general tips now let us come to the second part of our uh, this thing i'll quickly go through friends uh, i hope you can spare another 15 minutes so neuro linguistic programming as you know has three uh, important words neuro linguistic and programming neuro is connected with your mind and all the nervous system and uh, linguistic is about the language that we use the the verbal and non verbal communication and the programming is what happens in our mind so relating to our subconscious mind also a little uh, um, elaborate um, explanation is neuro is connected with the sensory organs and how they all affect our neuro system like i said in the beginning the brain and the, whatever happens that is all neuro and the linguistic is what language we use when open ended close ended question meta modeling lot of different techniques are there in communication in talking which is the way to express yourself and get connected with others 
and then programming is about the subconscious mind and about how to empower it and then how to make it uh, relieve you from negative uh, things like phobias and fears and many things. Now, how does NLP help? It brings out the best in us in a repeated way. Repetitive performances at a higher level. Okay. Different things. It will change your life from a negative and uh, doubting um, stage to a very, very confident, highly positive stage. Communication with people, rapport building is something which will be done very easily once we know that uh, what are the things to look at. There are so many different things. NLP is a ocean. And to ex explain that in 15 minutes is very easy in one way. Uh, but it will give you the curiosity to learn more. So, whatever you want to achieve in life, you can achieve. There are ways. It is not just for uh, exaggerated uh, way of uh, explaining about NLP. But definitely, there are some examples I will explain to you. Then, uh, like we say, the goodness in a st stone is inside. The statue of a god is inside. We have to only remove the excrescences. So, like in us, the negative emotions, if we remove, the self-consciousness, like we say, man minus vasanas, all the desires and complications. If we remove, we can see God. Like that, all the negativities to be removed, NLP has wonderful tools, very practical. Now, the basic principles or what we call the presuppositions of NLP are so, so interesting. So you will yourself see and you will really be fascinated by this. For me, it was like magic. One of the uh, important presuppositions of NLP is, says that the map is not the territory. Just remember, the map is not the territory. What is a map? The map is our neural pathways, the past experiences and the memories in our brain. A lot of things have happened to us in our past memories. Territory is the reality. Okay, So, is the reality of a situation, of a person. What map is not the territory will teach us is whenever you think about an incident or a person, you cannot judge because the map is not the territory. <clears throat> the reality is something which you will not know 100%. So you should not judge a person or a judge a thing as good or bad, correct or wrong because you don't know the reality. So with that, your approach will be different. You will not immediately come to conclusion and brand somebody as a wrong or good or bad. So this presupposition of NLP is very important. There's another one is what is the reality is itself something but what it represents to us is more important. What it gives to us is more important. How we take it is important. See friend, in uh, the real world there are many filters there are filters like audit uh, visual filters like uh, an image and uh, color, the shape, the size. There are auditory filters like the sound, the voice, the tonality, things. Then kinesthetic uh, uh, filters are there, which are like um, position, speed, intensity, like that. So beyond these filters, how the reality is represented to us is something we must be aware of. The same incident may be perceived by different people in different ways. Another important thing is we say sometimes I've communicated with him, finished. Then uh, it is his responsibility. Conveying is different from communicating. Conveying is just the, the process of passing the message. But communicating means you must ensure that the person has understood what you wanted to convey. So unless you get the response back and ensure that that is exactly same as what you intended to convey, communication is not complete. So if you, another uh, presupposition says, if you model uh, somebody or something 100%, you can exactly do like, 
So if I want to become like Roger Federer, if I do exactly like what he says, what he does, I can become like him. It is possible. As an example, I can say in the US, uh, a group of soldiers were uh, taken in the Air Force, in, in the Army. And they were all in the sniper squad. And they were not experienced before. This is, this is a fact. And this team of six people uh, were made to observe the best snipers in the army for about a month or so. And after that, these raw new um, initiatives, uh, initiates, became as good as the experts. So they followed the NLP process and that is how it was made possible. Finally, um, the fifth um, presupposition, there are 12 presuppositions, I'm just picking the most interesting ones. In any system, the control will be with the with what that one person or with that particular uh, system, uh, part of the system which has the most flexibility. That is another presupposition. And finally, NLP says, there is nothing called failure, it is only a feedback. So, and that feedback gives another opportunity to do something better. Like Thomas Alva Edison said, I didn't fail 2000 times, but I had 2000 experiences before, before he invented the bulb. So, we are coming to the end of uh, our, our session. But before that, I would like to uh, tell you uh, something very important. We are coming to the last about 10, 10 15 percent of the session. Conscious mind, unconscious mind. This is what uh, I am giving it as self one and self two. So, in our daily process of working and doing things, 10% of the things are done with our conscious mind. But 90% is done by the unconscious mind. The speed of the conscious mind is 40 bits per second, whereas the speed of the unconscious mind is 400 million bits per second. The unconscious mind's power is unfathomable, unexplainable. It's too, too, too much. It is very benevolent. It is very pure. It is very good. The unconscious mind. The, sub, the conscious mind sometimes calculates for different things, uh, for different um, aims and objectives. But the unconscious mind is very good. The conscious mind is the calculator. It's the judger. It can judge. But the unconscious mind is the performer. So, between the conscious mind and unconscious mind, we must know the power of this self too. Unconscious mind is very, very high. <clears throat> so, NLP teaches us to empower this unconscious mind and it makes it very powerful and that will make us do wonderful things like getting rid of phobias, and grief and all that and making us become very powerful. So, this, this point you can just note down. In tennis also, there is a book called The Inner Game. Because in every um, uh, game that we play, um, there is two things. One is the outer game, the, uh, the outer game and the inner game. The inner game is what we think inside, the self too. The outer game is uh, something which the conscious mind calculates. So there are different techniques. What simply I can tell you is, uh, we should let go the self too. We should not judge. We should not uh, be uh, troubled by the consequences of whether this will happen or whether that will happen, what, what they will say. We should not think of all that. We should just let go and let go the self to take over and do and then wonderful things will happen. So I will give you uh, um, some examples of two techniques. Uh, I will read out. I hope we have time. These are two wonderful NLP techniques that I will um, explain to you. This is a demo. So friends, please close your eyes. And then just I will read out the instructions and you just follow. <clears throat> this is a technique to improve your self-appreciation, uh, your self-esteem and self-confidence. I hope you all close your eyes. Relax. Take a deep breath. Think of any person, even a pet who likes you sincerely, unconditionally. Imagine you are writing your autobiography. 
sitting in one place. When you look up on the other side of the room, on the other side of a glass frame, that person who likes you so sincerely and unconditionally, that person, person is watching you. <laughs> now, imagine that you float yourself out of this sitting place and you are standing next to that person and observe you writing for a considerable amount of time. Next, imagine yourself entering the body of that observer and see yourself writing through this person's eyes with the same love and affection for a considerable period of time. Then float back into your body in this room and start writing the good qualities which you felt while watching from outside. Repeat this in different places with different people who like you and appreciate you. Through their appreciation for you, you will start to appreciate yourself and feel self-confident. So, please open your eyes. I hope you have understood the, uh, the sequence of this. If there are any doubts, you can, uh, we can discuss later also. This sort of a process of getting into the feelings of the people who you like, who like you, and putting them into your subconscious mind, you are empowering your subconscious mind, making your subconscious mind equal to the, the subconscious mind of the person who loves you. So that person will live inside you and will always be motivating you to that such an extent that always you will feel good about yourself. That much of love will get imbibed in you. That, that is the power of the subconscious. I will take you to another technique which is called the circle of excellence. This is to make you peak your uh, performances at all times. Sometimes we have some self-doubt, self-condemnation and we do not excel in our performances. So for that, uh, this is a technique you can use. So once again, please uh, close your eyes and I'll give you the instructions. You just imagine and visualize in your uh, mind what is happening. Think of a state of feeling where you would like to spend or that which you like you spend your entire life. A, a situation, a, a position or a state of or feeling with which you would like to spend your entire life. Think about it. What feeling did you have when you performed at your best in some activity in the past? Something which you have already performed. Some good performance. Think of that. Imagine a circle in front of you in which all those achievements are put inside. In that circle which is in front of you, all the goodness all the good claps, the appreciation, the good uh, things that you got because of that achievement, put all that inside. Somebody clapping for you, that some prize you got, some money you got, some um, promotion you got, whatever. So or you win won a tournament or some match, whatever. You put all that into that circle with the sound, with the color, with all the feelings, put that, put them into the circle. <laughs> now think of a time in your life when you were fully satisfied. So your subconscious mind is full of happiness. In this situation of happiness and with so many good things in that circle, put your leg inside that circle. When you are just putting your leg and all those emotions and the good things of that sound and everything is entering your body through that leg. Touch your shoulder. Tap your shoulder. The left uh, hand on the right shoulder or right hand on the left shoulder. Now, <clears throat> do this repeatedly in different ways. 
thinking of different uh, successful achievements and different types of happiness. Now, when you keep on doing this, that anchor that you set in, that is the tapping, will give that feeling of you getting all that power of success into you. So you can open your eyes. So this circle of excellence is a very simple technique. You can use it anywhere. You keep on doing this, that anchor that you set in will make you become powerful. What has happened is your subconscious mind has got all that uh, success in you. That anchor is the trigger which will make your brain think of all that and it will get connected to the subconscious mind which will give you all that power and at that time when you do something, the performance will be very good. You have seen Maria Sharapova <clears throat> walk back in the court and turn on the other side and do a small hop or something like that. So that is the NLP technique she is following. Many people have that anchor in the tennis court. I have seen. I myself used to use this in tournaments. I have found excellent results. Now, let us now come to the last part, which is the blending of these two concepts or how NLP will improve the performance in emo emotional intelligence. So, I am bringing down the four important aspects of emotional intelligence and we will see how NLP will help for self-awareness of emotions through our subconscious mind, we will have more understanding about what emotions we have. <coughs> and the, the deeper um, understanding of ourselves will also make us understand the emotions that we are having, the intensity level and everything. So managing our own emotions, anchoring, I told you, with an anchor, you can bring down positive emotions. Self-appreciation, NLP helps you to make you become more positive. Modeling for overcoming phobia. And there are many techniques like swish pattern. If somebody is a chronic smoker or a drug addict, there are techniques to remove. If somebody has died, if you committed a mistake, you feel guilty. You have phobia of certain fears. All these things can be removed by NLP techniques. For uh, developing empathy, like I said, reframing, the map is not the territory. These three presuppositions all will help you to have empathy on others. And finally, <clears throat> for social relationships, rapport building, I'll give you a very small example. There is something called breathing rapport building. You can, uh, in my uh, NLP uh, course, I saw this uh, technique work. So, there is a person who is made to sit down and you are sitting in front of that person. That person's eye is closed and he is mm, allowed to breathe normally. <clears throat> what you have to do is, you have to just see the intensity of the breathing and exactly breathe in the same way. The depthness, the time duration between two heartbeats, the same thing you have to match. After some time, slowly, after about two minutes or so, you are, when you are synchronized with that person, <clears throat> you change the way you breathe, your intensity and the duration and the heaviness and all that. You can see that that person also matches your breathing. This is not a joke. This happens. So that means when you connect with somebody in the subconscious level, it is called <clears throat> mapping, mirroring, pacing and leading. So first I have to understand map, then mirror, exactly do the same and then pace, then take them with us and then lead and then they will follow like what you are doing. This technique you can people use, use in sales, manage, sales uh, representatives to talk to a client and get the client to align with you. A lot of techniques when you want to have social relationships with some people, all these techniques can be used. So friends, that is the end uh, of our session. But before uh, 
closing down i would like to tell you something about what uh, uh, annamalai university uh, department of chemical engineering uh, a program called sted is happening <clears throat> uh, for the last about 4 to 5 years we are having this sted stands for the student training evaluation and development the 1981 batch mates um, we are about 60 of us uh, out of the 60 about 50 are active uh, so we are molding the students in the department from first year to final year uh, on a mentor mentorship mentee relationship so this was a photo taken of two years back uh, we all assembled there 40 of us were there we felicitated our professors we stood in the same position as we stood in the final year group photo and then um, we uh, oh so coming to the objectives of sted uh, we have signed an official uh, MOU with the university, uh, which is now uh, active. And then <clears throat> it is mainly to develop the students to explain about the industry. And uh, because they're, they're all from uh, rural backgrounds, they don't have much exposure. But each one of us, we have about 40 years experience. So this entire 2000 years experience, we are putting it back into our alma mater. And in a very systematic way, we have online sessions. We go directly there. This month, about 12 of us are taking turns to go and uh, have different sessions on different topics with them, clarify their doubts, uh, and we improve their uh, you know life skills in different ways. And then we make them uh, understand the basics of uh, um, subjects through visual thinking and make them present in online sessions in the form of simple PPTs with applications in industry. We give them career guidance, conduct mock interviews, and even uh, arrange for internships, uh, training, industries, uh, visits, and then finally placements. So I would wanted to share uh, all these things with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, once again, uh, thank you, Gopi, and thank you, friends, for, for the time. Gopi. Thank you very much. It was, a, it, was a, it was a very inspiring, warm, and motivating session. And uh, uh, we will not uh, we will now start taking questions, sir. Participants, you may please unmute and ask questions. Go, be, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Go on, sir. Please go on, sir. Yeah, my, uh, Mr. Maniman, sir. My name is Mani Minakshi Nathan, uh, 1984 Chemical. Okay. Uh, I think I am really appreciating Mr. Gobi for uh, this uh, Zoom call every Sunday. It's a very big uh, task he is doing. I'm really appreciating for his efforts first. And uh, next thing, uh, I think uh, I have seen your, uh, this thing, uh, your venture capital firm, actually. Uh, are you doing uh, any equity investment for a hospital uh, group? Can you able to do it? Uh, so you are asking me or Mr. Gopi? Yeah, yeah I'm asking you. Sorry. Mr. Manivanan, yeah. You are, you are actually a chemical engineer, right? Huh? I'm a chemical engineer, but I uh, I am not into equity uh, uh, arrangement uh, activities, sir. But you, I think your profile I have seen, you have developed uh, so much of medical colleges and all that. No, no, no. I was the head of infrastructure of Kel um, uh, Chetinad Health City in Kelambakam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, adjacent I was, to in, I was employed there. As the overall uh, head of infrastructure, I was reporting to MAM or Mutaya. Okay, okay. Chairman of Chetinat Group. So I was oh, employed okay. there as the head of infrastructure of that health. Oh. oh, adjacent to that, we have 40 acres of land, standard fire us actually. Oh. You are a oh. Chetinat health hospital. Okay, okay, okay. I thought you were uh, even to venture capitals or something like that. No, sir. Sorry. Uh, hi, uh, this is uh, Ram Kumar. Hi, Mani. Hi, hi, yes. Okay, your, okay. your presentation was excellent. In fact, I have been uh, long studying all these things about IQ, uh, EQ, and all that. Your uh, another dimension to the whole thing that is IQ, EQ, SQ, and AQ. That is that is something which is uh, a little more than what I had studied so far. Spiritual quotient is I have studied that the other AQ. Adverse quotient is something which we all have to handle at some point of time. Adversity. Adversity quotient. Adversity quotient, yes, yes. And somebody interfered, so that's why I had to stop my this thing. 
See, that one was very good. And I learned uh, something about that the additional fourth uh, aspect of it. And uh, alexitemia is something which I learned today from you. The first time I think I'm hearing that word, fantastic, that one. And study of neural science, I've always been interested in study of neural science. I've been studying about neural science. And uh, as you, I have also been learning all by myself, whatever little I'm able to understand. It's for my own improvement only. I'm, and just it, it is coming out of uh, you. It was great hearing from you. And you gave a fantastic lecture today. And the importance of occipital thing, you said, no? The occipital thing, that is but before the hijack of the amygdala. Hijack of the amygdala is something because it immediately we respond to things in anger or not respond, react in anger. I think this occipital, if one studies, that is you have this red signal and then this orange and then this green. If that orange is something which we where we pause and then go forward to making decisions or uh, taking, uh, that is taking action, I think this occipital reminds us of that orange thing, which has to be a pause button. I think that is something which is very well said by you. And gelatology is another word which I got from you today. Uh, for the first time, I'm hearing that word gelatology, that is laughter scheme, introducing nitrous oxide and using, um, uh, <laughs> that is artificial laughter and all that. And that's the science which I uh, got from you today. Thank you. A wonderful session. And Manivanan, be prepared to give a talk in the Theosophical Society. I am in charge of uh, conducting these monthly events for this Wisdom for Living series of monthly programs in the Theosophical Society. I am there in that place. I would invite you. I will talk to you personally after some time. And then mm -hmm. next month or month after next, whenever it's time, for, uh, you can actually decide the third Saturday or second Saturday of any month, April, May, June, something like that. And we can talk about, and I would like you to give a presentation of a similar kind there in the Theosophical Society. Thanks, Mani. Talk to you later. Thank you, Ram. Uh, good, good, good morning. My name is uh, Stalin. So I have a few questions, uh, Mr. Mani Vanna. In the initial uh, introductory slide, you said that uh, uh, when we talk about self-actualization, there was a mention, I mean, the, what I understood was uh, someone accepting things as they are. That's okay, I understand. But the very next thing is uh, someone who is willing to solve the problems. So if someone is accepting things as they are, will there be a tendency to solve the problem or just to pass through that without even solving it? Uh, see, the self-actualized person does not uh, get uh, discouraged or um, uh, discontented by the deficiencies of others. So, in that way, the, um, he will accept what the other person is, as he is. Okay. So, he will not be bogged down by the uh, inefficiencies of others. Okay, okay. That is the meaning of acceptance. But pro problem solving is different. Uh, so any problem that comes up, this person will be very confident to get into the situation and solve them. So rather than entering into a fault finding mode, that person will be into the problem solving mode. Exactly. To put it in a different manner. Okay, Correct. fine. Correctly told. Then you also mentioned a term called as uh, muscle memory. What exactly it is? Sir, uh, when you repeatedly do, like I said, neuroplasticity, the brain is connected to all the nerves and the neural systems. So when you keep doing a, an action continuously, the neural pathway is formed in the brain, which becomes like a memory. So for example, let us take a tennis stroke. The forehand has to be played like this. There are so many different, uh, there are about 10 or 12 different uh, aspects to that. Put your left foot forward, shoulder down, take your racket back like that. So when you, the coach teaches you and you keep on doing that action thousand times, this muscle passes on the signal to the memory and in the brain, the neural pathway is formed. And then later on, your subconscious mind automatically makes you play like that. So that is the muscle memory, the memory in the brain formed through the muscles. That is called. Can I say something here, uh, Mani? Can I say, yeah. can I add to this? See, they say, supposing you practice a cover drive, just like Sachin Tendulkar or Rahul Ravi, 10,000 times, same stroke for the same ball, 
you become a master of that. You become a master of whatever you think about all day long. That is how we form a habit in any case. And to, we are talking about muscle uh, memory. Muscle memory is similar to that as I was answering Stalin on behalf of you. Thanks, Mani. So, Stalin, I was telling you that uh, uh, must the neural pathway it is formed by connecting the neurons is like the person who is walking in the village and that uh, path is formed. So, this, this is the memory formation. It is done uh, through repetitive actions of the memory, of, of the muscle. Sir, 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 uh, yeah, uh, uh, Madi, sorry, I got muted. I am back again. So, this muscle memory is uh, only for developing the game, or uh, you are also trying to link with in case I want to become an expert in some particular activity. <clears throat> so Anything re re relating to muscle, sir, for example, typing on the um, keyboard is a muscle, muscle memory. Okay, okay. Like that, anything which has physical uh, action. Okay. Anything to do with the physical action. Anything. Fine. For example, driving the motorcycle. Yeah. Car. Okay. And uh, in another slide, when we were talking about various characteristics, there was a... Uh, I'm not able to recollect... For, I mean, I'm not repeating exactly, but I'll tell you what I understood. In any system, it is the flexibility which is able to control the system. Yeah. So, but, what it uh, says if is, there is... If you are trying to control something, you are trying to put it into some framework, then I will not call it as a rigidity, but is it really flexible? So, here is flexibility it means... Uh, each other? Mm. Yes, sir, I got your point. It's a very uh, nice question. So, here mm. flexibility means adaptability, sir. So, okay. that means for a person to be adaptable, he must be very skillful and knowledgeable. Okay. So, if a person is not able to adapt to different people and different situations, he cannot be flexible. So, okay. if for example, I'm, I'm you are having a group of 10 people who are all of okay. different mindsets and different professions, but uh, you as a person who would like to manage, control is actually managing, not really mm -hmm. control, control, but managing. Optimizing the level of performance is managing. Okay. Like a so, if, since you are knowledgeable in so many different things and you are flexible to adapt to the m mentalities of different people, the main um, power will be with you. Okay, fine. Clear. And there was a mention in some other place about uh, erasing the negative memories. Yeah. Is there any technique for erasing negative memories? Or yes, it is, uh, is it happening by nature to people? Some are able to forget the negative things, some are not able to forget that. Yes, sir. There are many techniques. Uh, like the, there is one technique called swish. And uh, the, the, the negative, first of all, we must un, uh, try to diagnose the negative memory. What type of negative it is. Negative means whether it is grief. That means you are having a sad feeling. That is also negative. Or whether you are feeling guilty of having done something wrong to somebody and you're feeling bad about it mm. or whether it is anger or anxiety like that you must try to diagnose what that negative thing is okay. then for each one of this negative thing there are different techniques for example if I am a chronic smoker that is giving mm. me a negative feeling I want to change that there is a technique mm. if I have done something wrong if I if I have hit my small uh, my son when he was very small still mm. if it is in, in my mind mm. that mm. I have beaten my boy when he was 7 years old yeah, if, if yeah. I am guilty feeling that for that also there is a technique beautiful techniques are there sir I have got rid of some uh, um, negative emotions through NLP techniques ok and uh, uh, just an observation I want to make <clears throat> Uh, it was really very interesting to go through the entire presentation and it became all the more interesting for me because going back in memory, my own memory lane, I seem to have done certain things uh, without really understanding these concepts before. I mean, that itself can be a presentation by itself, but uh, just I'll try to put it in a single line or uh, two lines. 
I was responsible for, I was asked to take over a company which was making losses for 19 years, right from the day of inception. I was given one year time to turn around the company. I said, I'll do it in nine months. It really happened in nine months with the same plant, with the same people. It was a BAFR company, so nobody would give even a single penny for you. We did the turnaround with the same people, with the same uh, people, same plant. <clears throat> it was all, I am very sure that it was only emotional uh, connecting and uh, unshackling the potential of the people. Another thing happened, of course, in a foreign country. <clears throat> there, it was an unrelated uh, field for me. Whatever uh, so-called subject matter expertise you are talking about, even that I did not have, but uh, some management had the confidence in me to take over that and uh, turn around. What was not done for uh, three or four years, even uh, experts from Australia, US, uh, China, whatever you call, we did it in three months. Same plant, same people, not even a single dollar of expo expense. Single line is emotionally connecting you to the people and making them to perform whatever was expected. Just an observation. Thank you. So, you know, one, sir. You know, one, sir. Great, great, great sharing. Thanks, sir. Thanks for uh, keeping the 81 uh, flag high. Congratulations. Best wishes to you. Hey, my query is, is fantastic to know this techniques, EQ and NLP. I'm trying to understand uh, two things. One is at what age we should uh, teach or inculcate such uh, habits or behavior. Uh, can we start in the school level as a curriculum or how to do this? Is it a institutional support required or it is a societal support required? Just to throw some light on this. Thank you. Yeah, Ilan, thank you so much. Uh, actually, I have been using NLP uh, techniques in simple ways in schools. Um, school means from sixth standard onwards. And oh, okay. uh, in small, small ways, uh, you can uh, make simplify them. And uh, mm -hmm. self-esteem is something which uh, students from uh, government schools and some small schools like yours and my mm -hmm. schools in villages, we, we have okay. ancestral schools. So I've been um, taking these classes uh, on life skills in which I've been incorporating uh, small NLP techniques about self-esteem uh, self development at a very young age, from six standard onwards. There are some small, small activities. For example, if you take life skills on the whole, there are many things like uh, listening skills, time management, which are all uh, easily um, taught to sc school children in the form of small activities like games. So the principles are heavy, what we are um, calling NLP and all that. But the crux of the issue is what? Is uh, to make somebody happy, to make somebody smile. So that main content, we can do it in the form of small activities. You can do it in schools. You can do it in social things. I have done it in many different forums. In schools, in a formal way, in some um, companies with some adults. Like I've conducted public workshops before and had NLP programs for parents of small children. And uh, we have had programs for teens, for tweens. Tweens are uh, age group before the teens. So between oh. 6 and um, uh, 12. Okay. The 13 teen starts. Okay. So uh -huh. right from 6, uh, standard 6 uh, or 6 age group, we can have this. Okay. Thank you. Good job. Yeah, the money, sir. Arun, Arun Ram Savai. Arun, any questions, Arun, from your side? Nothing, sir. I'm good. It's a good session. Thank you, Mani Manan, sir. Good. Sanjay? Sheetal. I'll be happy, friends, if uh, instead of not questions alone, if you can share some small insights or some share some experiences or anything, any thought that comes to your mind, that will also be nice. Sir, uh, uh, this is an excellent yes. session, sir. Uh, sir Sanjay here. Uh, this is an excellent session. Uh, very impressive. 
And uh, sir, I just wanted to ask you that uh, once again, because I couldn't trace that. The, of course, the occipital uh, does the decision that pausing we have to do. But before that, you mentioned about the hippocampus and the thalamus. How, how, how is that all those related in decision making? Uh, whether we can bypass that or not? Could you, I mean, uh, because maybe I didn't understand properly. If you can just repeat in one or two lines, that will do. No need yeah. to show the figure. Yeah. So, um, what we must understand is there is a electrochemical reaction forming in our brain. <clears throat> and the combination of these chemicals determine the emotion that we are getting. For example, there are some reverse programming which is uh, which people are doing now. What we saw in the slide is these actions secrete these chemicals and these chemicals um, uh, result in different emotions. So now what people are doing is to get a desired emotion, they are re, uh, they starting from the reverse. Like if you set small challenges to yourself and if you do com complete that uh, activity and win in that, you will develop some emotions because of the secretion of some chemicals. So this um, secretion of chemicals in the brain is a fact. It's just like a chemical factory. There are some raw materials and there are some uh, end products. And there is a process. This is uh, this uh, brain with the neurons, with the synapse, with all those parts and the chem. So these are the inputs, the raw materials. And there is an electrochemical reaction and there is a result of the emotion finally. So what we must understand is whenever there is something happening, whether it will um, result in good emotions or bad emotions, we can pre-think. And the, the intricate uh, combination of the different parts in the brain have their own, it is a very, very deep uh, study. But simply putting in the amygdala is a place where some chemicals are secreted and they transform into emotions. So if we don't uh, give time for the occipital lobe to do the analytical part, it will result in the amygdala hijack and the signals will quickly go and quick emotions will come and quick reactions will come instead of responding. So the uh, bottom line is give time for the signal to go to the occipital lobe and then get analytical uh, processing and then we will get better uh, thoughts. Okay, sir. I, yeah, thank you, sir. Dekhandar, sir. Please go on. Unmute and please ask your question, sir. Ah, yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Gopi. Um, uh, sir, I think it's very interesting. Uh, I think it's... Uh, so, I'm so fascinated by the... Uh, your... Uh, Neuro-linguistic uh, programming explanation on this language, uh, uh, neuron mind and programming on empowering the subconscious. Sir, the, the last word that you have told about this amygdala hijack, see, what happens is the, any instance, you know, immediately we <laughs> react. Okay, So that the, the time for the responding or the time uh, span that available for uh, understanding and responding it happens in just, you know, uh, a second or a, or a microsecond and this uh, yes when we feel anger we have some feel something in our uh, chest we feel something in our uh, throat okay and then we feel uncomfortable when, when we meet somebody you now all those things happen but then it happens so automatically that uh, you know it looks like uh, <laughs> it's a one-way path so to reverse it i wonder if uh, because i also like this program this neuro-linguistic program and this, uh, how many filters we have, and how to, is it the possibility of removing so many filters, auditory filter or sensory filter or kinesthetic filter that you have explained? So how is that <laughs> on a practical, uh, feasible level? How fast we can? Uh, <laughs> you, you have to tell, sir. <laughs> yeah. This is my so I, I will divide your question into two parts. One is. Uh, the speed by which the amygdala hijack happens and how we can get over it. So it is only by practice, sir. So uh, like we say, every skill has two parts, a technique and practice. So first we have understood the technique. 
we have understood the insight of the technique now we have to put it into practice so when we put into practice slowly we will we will have the calmness calmness to know that there is a problem we should not get into the problem and make quick uh, thoughts or actions so that mindset will come so just like muscle memory we have to do it thousand times so immediately now for us we know like i am also a very uh, anger driven person all of us are in different uh, levels so i have seen extremes of anger in my life uh, personally and from others so in different walks of life so so extreme so uh, what you say is 100% correct it is easier to tell but if we put it into practice the first thing like i said is that fight or flight decision fight or flight is whether you should stay there and confront or whether we should just walk away so that's why many people say if there is a controversy and there is a chance of something um, triggering your anger just go out take time take a deep breath outside that's the simplest thing that they say or they say it count one from 1 to 50 or 1 to 100 these are all the small simple ways so that the amygdala hijack doesn't happen that is one thing secondly regarding the filters no worry sir see uh, uh, the filters we are not going to filter out the reality the reality is in the form of uh, auditory visual and kinesthetic uh, things happening we are not going to remove the reality we cannot remove the reality but the way we perceive we should uh, know that uh, we should understand from their perspective why the visual things are happening for say, somebody is threatening there is a visual in input so we have to filter so we need to know why he is so we should not be like i said in the beginning we should separate the message from the speaker that is one uh, important um guide that will help us when somebody is talking to you in an angry point, uh, note the visual content is a filter and the auditory thing is there so you just write down what they have told and then forget the image remove the face and remove the tone and everything separate the message from the speaker both visually and auditorily and only look at the content of the speech then some things may come to your mind so uh, the filters uh, need not really filter but they have to analyze they have to analyze in an intelligent way that is where the intelligence comes the emotional intelligence pa pa part comes a layman who is not intelligent uh, will just take the raw content of the reality and the raw content will what you will try to react you said like that that is called combative listening in listening skills there are different types of listening active listening uh, paraphrase i mean we, in uh, active listening different techniques but there is one type of listening which is called combative listening combat means fighting so you listen only to fight so you take the auditory and uh, visual um, details only to tell oh you told me like that so like that so we, we should not do that so an emotional intelligent person will not do combative listening so there the filtering will happen in a way where only the content will be there and then your responding will be not aggressive or passive but it will be assertive that is where that uh, smart intelligence uh, comes in sir i hope i have explained to some extent you know just one more thing sir this frequency of repetition that you are telling now practicing it these techniques uh, it requires somebody else to hmm, tell no to do uh, definitely sir i strongly yeah. recommend those who are interested in nlp to undergo a course i took my course from a very very uh, uh, efficient smart and uh, renowned uh, nlp trainer called uh, dr sumathi uh, narayanan so i can share the number with you anybody who wants uh, you can uh, uh, i can share that number with sd gopi or even tell now so tell they, now sir yeah yeah one sec and dr sumathi narayanan she is uh, one of the best uh, nlp trainers in india she has about 50 years experience uh, with her and i strongly recommend you to uh, contact her and uh, her number is 98410 1 4 6 2 6 9 8 4 1 0 1 4 2 6 6 is it 1 4 6 2 6 okay okay 6 okay written okay thanks sir 
So I can type it down also here. Uh, yeah. yes, uh, Gopi, Somebody can you wrote. just type it down in that? Uh, Somebody wrote down. Yeah. Somebody wrote. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sumati Narayanan. Dr. Sumati Narayanan, 98410 14646 626. 626. Yeah. It's already posted there. It's posted. It's already there. 98410 14626. She yeah. conducts uh, online and uh, you know direct classes. Uh, I have come, come, What's the duration? Uh, it, is, it is for five days, full day sessions. I have completed the basic program and the master's program. Um, I'm so I'm a master practitioner of NLP. I, I mean, academically, there are wonderful things sir, in NLP. I I'm not exaggerating. Everyone uh, who is uh, here should join that course. It is easy to do it online. Also, the fees is also very reasonable. It's about fifteen thousand or so only. Uh, but you get uh, life changing um, inputs. And Dr. Sumati is very, very good. See, I had a problem of claustrophobia. I'll tell you openly what is, there is nothing wrong sharing with friends. So claustrophobia is something which is um, very serious. Sometimes I cannot even go by flight. Even now, uh, I cannot go in a flight. So um, at one stage, I was not even able to go in a train. So, so she cured me in one session of that claustrophobic uh, feeling. I had another uh, major problem with me, uh, uh, a negative emotion of grief, something which I did uh, in my life. So she got over it uh, in one session, the live demo. So, and in tennis, uh, I have improved my game uh, definitely because of the circle of exp excellence and uh, role modeling. Many things have happened to me after uh, I went through that course, NLP course. Salin sir, Salin sir. Yes, I'm there. Salin sir, I will just connect you to Mr. Jayakanthan. Jayakanthan is the plant head of Asian Paints in Kadlo. Okay. Uh, maybe we can uh, just uh, give a brief intro about uh, CSC uh, later, later on offline. Offline will connect. Sure. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Amrita, Maybe. please go on. Amrita, please go on, Amrita. Uh, sir, hello. Good morning. It was actually a very nice talk. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, yes. please. Yeah. So my question is, I uh, I see that in my life, I come back like a bee stuck in a door. Um, the same pattern of uh, uh, thinking and the same situations back and back again. Uh, is there any way that I will be able to overcome that? Is it to do with my thing of like uh, uh, getting stuck in the victim role? And how do I get over that? Um, well, you feel you are getting stuck stuck in a particular situation because of the people around you or with your own thoughts? No, one thing again, it's like, I'm, I'm being very open here. It's related to my marital life. Post-marriage, I feel like every time I get stuck in the same kind of situation, which I've never like, never ever like been in the same kind of situation ever before my marriage. So I don't know if it's the kind of people or um, I know like the way I perceive is also like very, what to say, uh, it's very rigid and I'm not able to be flexible there. Yeah, so this is where we apply the reframing and empathy techniques. Uh, and uh, we try to look at the situation from different perspectives. So if we can have a discussion in a, separately, Ms. Amrita, I think I will be able to understand more about uh, the matter and be able to give you more suggestions. Okay, okay. Will, will, will that be all right with you? Yes, definitely. Most yeah. definitely. Surely. Okay. Yeah, I think please do try and if something comes out well, then uh, this, this entire forum will benefit uh, one person or a group of persons and we'll be happy to thank uh, Dr. Manivaran for this. Thanks. <laughs> Sheetal, you can go on, Sheetal. Yeah. Hi. Hello, everyone. How are you? Good, thank you. Hi, Gopi. Hi, hi, hi. Lovely oh. session, uh, uh, Mr. Manivannan. Uh, I really enjoyed it because I'm myself an NLP master practitioner and you made a lot of things so much simplified and clear. 
um and i just wanted to uh, not hijack your program at all but would definitely like to volunteer myself for any uh, such questions if somebody wants to get in touch personally with me for such a uh, coaching or counseling because I also use NLP techniques and I was fortunate enough to conduct one session here for this uh, well, very elite group of people. So uh, anybody who's uh, willing to actually get into a one-on-one -on -one personal session can also get in touch with me. I'd really love to offer my services through you know this platform. Thank you. Great, Ms. Sheetal. Nice knowing you. Would you would you like to add uh, some points to Ms. Amrita's uh, this thing, or would you like her to talk to you also? Oh, definitely. You you've actually nailed it. Uh, you you really rightly said that reframing uh, and empathy would definitely be the approaches for her. But I believe she would need a one on one session to actually. Uh, peel off the layers of the onion and get to the root cause and then certain techniques of NLP will definitely benefit her marital life I'm myself uh, you know married uh, mother of two kids so I know things uh, how they turn and uh, what what challenges a woman faces so yes uh, I, I would encourage her for a one-on-one -on -one session for sure Major sir, any question from your side, sir? Sir, one question may I I thoroughly enjoyed the session of Mr. Mani Vandan. Sorry. I got one similarity with Mr. Mani Vandan. I've also learned NLP from not only from Dr. Samati, but also from her master, that is Mr. Arvamadam. And so that way I'm very, very close to the NLP techniques. And the way Mani Vandan was telling, I was able to relate with him very, very closely. And the way he was able to take the session speaks volumes about his deep involvement with this fascinating science, art, and tool of NLP. NLP offers a lot of rapid uh, tools uh, tools for rapid uh, success and changes. And uh, I'm so glad that Manipur was able to bring forth the essence of NLP in less than an hour or so. And I'm also equally fortunate to meet Sheetal Sood, who had uh, taken a wonderful session a few months back here in this pl platform. And I found in her a lot of energy, oozing out with energy, positivity and enthusiasm. And the same I was able to see with Mr. Manivan also. Thanks a lot. And those of you in Chennai, they can walk into a place called Hypnotic Circle. It happens every second Sunday. Today, in fact, also it is incidentally the second Sunday. Uh, that is today being second Sunday. The meeting starts at 2.29 at Hotel Palm Grove. And all of you are most uh, welcome to join us there as my personal guests. I'm, I happen to be the president of the hypnotic circle. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Major, I would like to say that I did not forget you were the one who recommended me to this platform. So I'm still eternally <laughs> grateful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Major. Uh, like Thank you, you, I. My pleasure. Thank you, Major uh, Narayanan. Um, I was also fortunate to be trained by Sumati's uh, uh, um, in the guru, uh, Dr. Uh, Aravamadan. Um, I didn't mention his name because he's no more and I so badly miss him, but he, he, he was uh, uh, like God for us at that time. So they are all blessed to have been trained by him. And uh, friends, uh, Hypnotic Circle does wonderful sessions on hypnosis, which is a little more deeper uh, knowledge on the subconscious mind and uh, the trance and uh, things like that. They are all psychological tools. Um, with uh, deep backgrounds um, on understanding of the mind. So those who are interested in the higher levels of the mind analysis and understanding can join the hypnotic circle and benefit from the different sessions that they are organizing. We had a few sessions sir, from, uh, from, from major side. Okay. Sanjay, Sanjay, please go on, Sanjay. You had a question, Sanjay? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, sir, this is, uh, as you uh, as you said, sir, like different uh, experiences in our life, they influence each other. So if I may ask you, like uh, with your uh, Freemasonry ex experience or practices, I mean, how it has uh, helped you in NLP training or whether it is they are totally independent? I mean, sir, it's just a question. You are muted, sir. 
So free, Freemasonry for the general group here is the world's oldest fraternal organization. So uh, we uh, believe in the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of uh, human beings. Uh, free, Freemasonry has a lot of uh, tenets um, and charity is one of the most important things helping their fellow beings. So um, becoming a better man uh, is the fundamental uh, concept of masonry. We say that Freemasonry makes a good man a better man. So in the process of understanding masonry, uh, there are a lot of insights, um, like how we look at ourselves uh, in this world. We came with nothing and we go with nothing. So in the meantime, uh, how we uh, treat ourselves and how we look at uh, look at the end of the life and what we do during this life is uh, a lot of insights and life's lessons told through allegories in Freemasonry, which is held in the form of ceremonies and uh, rituals. So uh, connecting that with NLP, NLP also makes a good man a better man. So in this concept, both masonry and NLP have the same intention and the same aim or goal. But uh, NLP will help us to get rid of bad things, which are which is not told in masonry. Like masonry talks about the things that you have to do, but NLP tells you how to do. So that is the know how. So know how is uh, something which we learn from NLP. So I'm sure um, I'm, I definitely enjoy the concepts of NLP and EI in being a mason. So when I meet people, uh, we do a lot of charity with that uh, benevolence and uh, the, the way we treat people. Uh, Freemasonry is unmatchable you know, support to our lives. Have we touched upon the, the, the point that you said, Mr. Sanjay? Or? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hari Priya, please go on. Yeah, good noon, everyone. It's a wonderful session, Mr. Vanivanan. I'm from 93 Chemical. Uh, so my question to you is like, uh, how can EI and NLP help leaders with the ability to deal with the impact of COVID-19? Because I wanted to know, uh, we're still going through that COVID-19 repercussions and whatever it is. And then uh, what are the ways that we can implement uh, um, this EI and NLP uh, in our practice, everyday practice, uh, in our business or our entrepreneurial journey? Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. I, I'm sorry if I didn't uh, get your name. Uh, Hari Priya, Hari Priya. I'm Hari, Hari Priya. Hari, Hari Priya, Hari Priya. Yes. So, uh, hi Hari Priya, nice knowing you. We both studied in the same college. So, uh, yes. yeah. So, uh, two points, you know, you were asking about COVID in, uh, impact. Uh, see, COVID has uh, really made our minds uh, look at ourselves and others differently. We were sweeping our streets, we were uh, cleaning our houses and washing our own toilets and many things. So, it made uh, the human mind become more humble. So, um, that same humility we we we, should, we can use to um, uh, have more empathy so empathy is something which we don't practice uh, on a day to day basis with who, whoever we meet so me when i look at my the, the, the maid who comes i don't look at uh, her like a maid with like how i was looking before like, uh, like any servant we have a different way of immediately thinking a servant a maid i now look at everybody as the same uh, somehow they have been, uh, th th their life is like that and our life is like this. But in all ways, we are the same. That equality is something which has come into our mind. So I think COVID also has helped us to mellow down in our lives and look at uh, um, life a little more, uh, very differently. That life can go away from us just like that. It's in a matter of seconds. So we have to value our life very preciously and um, in a day-to-day -day basis, we have to um, inculcate EIA and NLP in whatever we do with every human, uh, sentient being, any living being around us. So that is one thing which I feel uh, definitely COVID has helped, helped us in the way we look at our lives. 
Uh, secondly, you were asking about um, practicing NLP in our business or uh, as a profession. Yes, in every uh, aspect of our lives, whether you are have, you are an entrepreneur having your own company or you are working for somebody, all these um, techniques we can use on a daily basis. If we start understanding the techniques and put them into practice, then the skill will come. Like I said, skill is equal to technique plus practice. The techniques are taught uh, through training uh, in NLP training programs and EI programs. And then once we put it into practice, depending on each one's um, uh, life, you will have different ways of implementing. Uh, just like we all have different handwriting um, styles, but the content is the same. So we can use our own style and write whatever we want. So these are tools which we will definitely uh, make uh, use of. Uh, and definitely it will help us in all walks of life, not only in um, professions, but in sports, in any activity. Thank you. Any questions? Rajan, Roy, Matthew, Dhanashekaran, sir. Any of you have a question, you may please unmute and ask. Gobi sir, one thing that Tamil guy is saying, my mom is 85 years old. Her night guy, that leg pain, when they are giving, he is, that is, very disturbing. They are giving. 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 They Pain relieving is a very uh, physiological thing. Yeah. Naturally, we are running a toll hospital actually in Tamil Nadu. Even he is not satisfied with the medicine and night and the pain on the jana, it ultimately goes to the mind. The mind on the Idipunamula, Moon Verga, brother, and a sister message you put rumba field punwanga. So, that course, she will be all right. Pain overcome under the distraction. When a pain is a the pain is a pain. So, if you distract the pain, you can see the pain. 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 You Pain or relief, but actually, when the mind is a medical problem, when you can think of. Okay. Can, can I tell it in English, Mr. Nathan, so that others can Yeah, yeah okay, please, 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 please. Yeah. See, there, is, there was something called the phantom pain. Uh, people okay. who were um, in war, they. Okay. Uh, what is it? Some confirm your speaking language. Yeah, something. Okay. Yeah, so. So um, during the war, during the war, there were soldiers whose legs were ampu amputated. Uh, they like in this in a, in a matter of uh, microsecond because of the big blasts, their um, leg or arm got amputated. So they had something like a pain, uh, which was not um, a real pain, but it was a phantom pain. That is a fake pain. So their the mental agony was too much. They were not able to get over that. So um, there was a doctor called, there is still, he is still living, he is from Chennai. His name is Dr. Ramachandran. He is now residing in the US. He is a neurophysician. So he connected the brain uh, and the cognitive uh, aspects of pain and found out a solution. What he did was uh, he made a box with a mirror. And he made the person um, put his left, um, see, the, what, the problem which the patient had was, he is telling, sir, doctor, I'm having a pain in my right hand. But actually, the right hand is not there. Because the right hand got amputated in the, in the blast. But he is telling, I'm feeling the pain in the right hand in this place. So what, there was no um, uh, solution for this for many decades. So Dr. Ramchandran made a box with a mirror and he made them put the um, left hand and he saw the right hand in the, the reflection. Then he took the right hand away and the brain memory removed that right hand being there. From that time, the brain 
knew that there is no right hand. And with that um, memory change, the pain also vanished. So this is a different to issue. To add on to this, I would like to say like uh, there was a movie recently it got released showing this. I think uh, Nani, somebody else has uh, acted in that movie which shows like uh, his leg was amputated, his left or right. Same thing like the mirror has been kept so he forgets about it. Yes. Uh, but Mr. Nathan, uh, your mother's case is real. You know, that there is the part and the real problem is there. Only medication and uh, distraction of mind, uh, certain things are possible. See, actually NLP has techniques to cure uh, some uh, ailments. Uh, and the next level of hypnosis is also possible because in olden days, Many surgeries were done by putting the brain to trance state and uh, lower levels of mind. Uh, as you know, the mind uh, has different wavelengths the, from the gamma, beta, alpha, like that. So the alpha state is uh, with the frequency of about 17. And the normal brain uh, in a turbulent situation is about 45 hertz. And when you go to the deepest stage of sleep, it will be about 0.5 to 0.1. So, hypnosis can be a relief for your mother. So, in hypnosis, there is different types of hypnosis. Self-hypnosis is also there. A person can do their own hypnosis. For example, I can, with a simple technique, we can all go into the trance state. From 45 hertz, I can immediately bring you down to 17 hertz. Now itself, in, in about a matter of two minutes. So, like that, there are self-hypnosis techniques which can make your mother get over the pain. See, uh, in, uh, in olden days, there were people who used hypnosis, hypnosis for surgeries. There was a scientist, I forget his name, who has done 400 surgeries by putting the person under hypnosis. So, pain relieving also is possible through hypnosis. Not NLP or EI, but hypnosis definitely is. I'm sure about it. I'm sure Major Narayanan can add more value to that. For two minutes, you can do the trance now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if everybody wants, I can do that. So, it is a simple um, this thing. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Sit comfortably and take a deep breath. Think of a light, signal light in front of you in a distance of about 10 meters or so. There is like a traffic signal. The orange light is burning. Just keep on looking at that orange light. Keep looking at that orange light. Count from 10 backwards to 1. 10. Keep looking at that orange light. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Deeper, 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 deeper. Deeper. Think of the light again. Keep on looking at that light. Count from 10 on backwards. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, Think of your deep breathing. Go deeper, deeper. 
So this is this is uh, one type of uh, um, self hypnosis, um, which if you lie down in a room without um, bright lights in a dark place with, without any noise, you can just do this two or three times in a day to bring you down in your mindset. So this will automatically bring your uh, brain frequency waves frequency down. <clears throat> So yeah, it's basic, fantastic. yeah. So you people say we can have power naps, no? So they all immediately because like this they just go. You you, you can even say some small um, um, mantras, some om, om like that. While instead of the numbers yeah. backwards, you can also say that. But the the like, but light color is just for focusing your mind on one particular point. Otherwise, your mind will be wavering because the inside the mind we have a camera. That's called the uh, third eye, the visual thinking. So some image has to be there. So instead of, if you leave it, you will keep on thinking of different uh, visuals. So the red light will put your visual in one spot and then the auditory uh, signal will be the flow of this thing and the telling deeper and deeper will make your subconscious mind go deep, deep and deep and deep, like almost like sleep mode. So in the process, your frequency of the brain waves will come. So if you do this a yeah, few times in a day, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know. I actually my question is actually my mother. He she used to get that pain in the midnight actually, but we could not able to help her out. But is there any hypnosis consultant or anybody those who yeah. are having twenty four hours pain? Suppose if she got pain, I used to give the number and then he asked to call for that time. He used uh, the technique and then uh, she settled down means uh, it will look nice. Is it uh, okay? My idea? Yeah. Okay. Can you please talk to Dr. Sumati? Um, okay. I've okay. given that okay. number. So um, yeah, she will sure. be better because she she is a professional. She sees cases like this. She, she okay. treats okay. people. Okay. Very good. The psychological listing. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manuna sir. Okay. You are in Chennai or uh, you are in... Uh, Chennai Nodia? only, Nelson Manikam Road. Oh, and yeah. Nelson Manikam Road. Cha, 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 cha. We will meet, sir, sometime in Chennai yeah. with Mr. Gobi. Sure, sure, definitely. We are running, yeah, we are running Bebel Hospitals, uh, chain of hospitals in Tamil Nadu. 12 oh, hospitals we... right now we are running. Bebel, eh? Bebel Hospital. Yes, yes, yes. My own brother is the uh, chairman and managing director. Okay. Vetrivel, Dr. Vetrivel, yeah. Okay. Anything you can be able to do in the hospital line, also I can refer my brother. No issue. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kobi, sir. Bye. Ah, thanks. Thanks, Vinashi. Major okay. Narayanan, is he there now? Uh, ah, he's still there. He's still there. He's still there. Uh, maybe he will be able to give some tips to Nathan. Oh, Mr. Mayor. He is our colleague, or, sir. No, no. Major, hmm. sir, is from uh, the, the hypnotic circle. Uh, Major, sir, you can tell, sir. I am very much there. Oh, oh, one thing which uh, uh, she practices is EFT. Emotional freedom therapy or emotional freedom technique, which is tapping at a few points only concerning the face, underneath the okay. armpit, and the fingertips. Very, okay. very easy. It's there in the net also. She can just okay. try it three times or four times a day, and immediately okay. she'll find alleviation to her pain and it'll be of a great palliative cure. If she's able to practice regularly, she'll be able to drastically bring down the pain. What is that? What is that, Watson? EFT. Emotional technique. freedom technique. Just go to the net and type EFT. A small page will open. It will be. It will have an image also. Where you like to tap. Just take these two fingers. Tap. Edge of the eyelid. That is eyebrow. E e eyebrow. EFT. EFT. Emotional e freedom e technique. Emotional right? Freedom technique. Okay. You like to tap at the edge of the okay. eyebrow. E inside of the eyebrow. Okay. Underneath the okay. eyes. Underneath the nose. Okay. Underneath the yeah. uh, here. Okay. Here. Okay. Pump it and the end of the fingers. Okay. That's it. Except okay, okay. this uh, ring finger. One to just tap. Okay. Just tap gently. And that's it. Okay. okay. These are the no endings. Thank you. From so here, you will get a lot of energy. Okay. The body will take it. Very, very powerful technique. Again, okay. I learned it from um, Mr. Arvamudam, who happened to be the teacher to Dr. Samadhi okay. Narayan also. And Samadhi Narayan is accredited to be the okay. Okay. founder okay. member of Hypnotic Circle, of which I am the president now. Very good. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. To add Mr. to Ma Major thank you. Thank you, sir. Nathan, uh, in NLP, there are yeah. techniques to in NLP, there are techniques to get over allergies. 
Okay, for example, okay. if somebody is allergic to prawns or allergic to seafood or allergic to some okay. uh, pollen and they get rashes okay. all over the body. So it oh, is okay. called uh, adrenaline induced urticaria. So when oh, the, okay. there is an adrenaline rush because of some stimulus, so this adrenaline mm -hmm. will um, trans uh, transmit into form of allergies called urticaria. Okay. That is a ra rashes all over the body. So to body, to, yeah. Get, yeah. to get over allergies, there are some techniques. NLP has techniques. In NLP. So, oh, yeah. So okay. even if you, good, for okay. example, somebody is allergic to milk, uh, after this practicing this ah. technique, even if he takes milk, he will not feel that allergy. Okay. okay very like good. Like that to okay. get over okay. this pain, uh, there will be some. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Major, sir. One last question. Anybody, anybody else wants to take a, uh, ask a question, you may please unmute and ask. Dhamadi, sir, I saw you. I saw you looking to ask, ask for a question. Hello. Hello, sir. Am I uh, audible? Yeah, audible. Audible, yeah. though. <laughs> From my laptop, there was some other problem. That's why I really couldn't uh, manage. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Manivandan, sir. It was a really excellent session. I thought uh, being <laughs> being an R&D person of BRC, I thought you are going to tell something <laughs> different, but they got into totally a different arena. But 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 I think it is it is very much needed for the people. See, my question now is, I think this will be, if this can be used for a better results in a team which is going to do the R&D on, on some, uh, what do you call, uh, very secret uh, fields and all, how uh, they can be motivated. Like, uh, yeah. you see, right from money to time to lack of technical knowledge to everywhere we struggle, you know very well especially being in the field of nuclear science, we struggle a lot, actually. In what way this NLP can help them? That was first question. Second question, you can probably you can answer together also. Second question is, suppose you get it typified by a sort of your uh, uh, muscle memory, will it not be a, will it be a strength or a disadvantage for uh, R&D type of activity? So, can you repeat the second question? So will you, uh, if it, if you getting the word, I, if you get typified, like typified. Uh, 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 the, by by way of this muscle memory, by way of it managing yourself to a particular technique, will it be a strength or a disadvantage for R and D type of it? Okay. So your first question was uh, how to use uh, NLP and emotional intelligence for um, improving the performance of the R and D team. So uh, yes, R and D, especially when there is lack of information and some funds as well as time related issues. Yeah. So uh, in in all these uh, activities, you have different um, uh, things to uh, comply with. One is uh, time management. One is uh, goal setting. And uh, one is resources uh, utilization, all that. So, um, uh, goal setting uh, in has um, a, as an activity, NLP has a technique, how to set goals and how to accomplish those goals. So, there is a technique for that in, in, in NLP. So, regarding bonding together as a team, Definitely the circle of excellence to bring out the best performance, to motivate somebody to do something. For example, when you divide the uh, the workloads among different people that each one has to do some things, like uh, somebody was saying that, uh, Stalin was saying that he was able to turn around a company in nine months compared to 12 months, even with limitations of funds and other things. In the same way, in that each team will have their own role to play in achieving a goal and in doing some things there how they will be self motivated that that sense of self appreciation and then the the, the, the sense of um, excelling and peaking in their performances all that uh, will definitely be done through an uh, through nlp and time management and uh, this goal setting there are specific techniques in nlp to do that and once again, gelling as a team, 
definitely that team spirit having empathy for each other and communication building a rapport is extremely powerful tools are there in nlp so the whole team will be so highly motivated so highly pumped up now you see people like uh, shaitil and all how positive and how energetic they are so like that uh, the nlp will bring out the best in each one so a, a session for uh, your team with uh, common um, goals that what you want from this what you want to achieve what support you want if you say that yeah yeah, yeah. Say, sorry sorry for my interruption actually see what what happens is actually at a particular moment you know everyone is gelled together to such an extent that nobody wants to think against a concept at all i feel this is a wrong uh, thing in a teamwork someone should definitely take the opposite uh, stand and uh, keep questioning otherwise uh, we all will end up in a, what i call imaginary thing which is not actually good uh, yeah. so i used to encourage or otherwise at least nominate someone to talk against actually mm -hmm. so uh, even that sort of uh, difficulties have come uh, in a no no it depends upon in your group meetings how far you are encouraging uh, the voice of dissent otherwise what you are saying is correct otherwise See, instead of thinking and finding uh, so many alternatives, many times unknowingly people start following. Uh, let's say that in a group of 10, some one or two people start giving some ideas. It is easier for the other seven or eight to say yes instead of coming out with alternatives. So provoking people to talk and even some leading questions totally in opposite direction. It may not be your view, but at least for the sake of initiating a discussion, you have to go into the direction. And I think as a culture, once you start encouraging the talk of dissent or dissidents without taking anything personally, that should be the message to the team. Otherwise, you know, why people are reluctant to talk? They think that if I say negative, my boss may not agree, may, may not like even, or my colleague may be cross with me. So it's a question of developing the culture over a bit of time, encouraging dissent. And um, uh, I mean, I'll, I do not want to take much of time in my own meetings. I know right. who will be the people yeah, normally yeah. talking negative. I used to ask them to talk first. Good. Uh, Dr. Davamani, your next point was about uh, the muscle memory. Yeah. So you are saying that uh, sometimes uh, you will get stuck with one type of uh, a pattern of working. So it will, uh, then it will affect the flexibility. I don't know yeah. if that is what you wanted. So yeah. muscle memory definitely is an advantage. It is not a disadvantage because um, you can always create new memories. It is not that once a particular muscle memory is there, it will um, uh, uh, restrict other muscle memories to be formed or other patterns of memories to be formed. No. For one particular um, purpose, you can develop a muscle memory and keep doing something in a very efficient way. It is a... It is a technique to improve the efficiency. But once you do that, it, it will not re restrict you to do to develop other um, um, benefit, this thing, skills. You can always uh, do something differently later on. So it will not restrict. It will only help. Okay, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we are done, sir. Thank you very much for your time, patient, patient hearing and answering all the questions, Mr. Maniwanan. We enjoyed, we, we enjoyed having you, hosting you today. We look forward to meeting you soon. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It was, Thanks it was a lot, pleasure Maniwanan. Meeting. It was really a good session. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure meeting so many eminent people from diverse, uh, um, you know, I mean, work, work uh, positions and places. So thanks to Gopi and his team. Thanks, APN. It was a memorable time I had with you. Thank you.